everybody. If you are a fan of the occult, especially the darker side of the occult, if you like learning about the stuff that is done in the shadows, boy, do we have an event for you. We want to welcome you to Tales of Survival from the Dark Side. Wow. What a lineup of speakers we have. I've had the privilege of meeting incredible survivors on my channel, uh, Aquarius Rising Africa, over the past four years. And it's been an amazing journey for me to bring them over and just share with more new people sharing their stories. Now, guys, this is going event is going to be held over on Gnostic TV. And Indeed. tickets are are now on sale they're 50 percent off right shanti so we have a link yeah. below um and also if you want to watch the full trailer of the event which cannot be shown on youtube you can hop over to gnostic tv and watch that trailer as well we're looking to release this panel live on gnostic tv on friday october the 11th at 11 a.m eastern time so tickets are 50 percent off and yeah. once you, once you bought your ticket you can watch as many shows as you want and you can watch them as many times as you want support our survivors they deserve to be heard and there's nothing better more healing for a survivor for a survivor than to be told i believe you so thank you guys um if you have any questions please make sure to ask shanti or me down in the comment section section below otherwise we look forward to seeing you guys over on gnostic tv thank you so much bye everybody Hello, you guys, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. As many of you are aware, as I've said this whole week, just a reminder that for the next foreseeable future, for the next couple of weeks, there are not going to be any deep dives into historical stuff on my channel, which is basically what my channel really is, is founded upon. But that is because of the current um, current events going on in our world. And I'm going to have to be very careful, obviously, um, how I how I say that. I think you guys know exactly what I mean. I'm filming this on October 31st, 2024, if that gives you any indication. We've got a huge, we'll say, competition coming up in the United States. We know that this is like the Mac Daddy for the world. And so I feel like it is my due diligence right now to really focus on looking at the spinning wheels in our current events. Now, with that being said, I do have some people coming on who have done their own deep dives that they're going to be presenting on my channel. And that's fine because they are presenting their own deep dives. But as far as for me, it takes a lot to do research. And I just feel like right now, the way that I and my channel and my platform with you guys, how we can be of service to the world is to focus on what is happening in the here now. And then once this passes over, we'll go back to looking at history. I've got such a ba backlog of deep dives of Mystery Mondays that if, you, if you're if you missing that stuff, you can go and look through all the playlists. I'm sure there's so many episodes that most people have missed, especially since my channel has grown. So, but anyway... What I want to talk about today, and the reason why this is concerning to me personally for the here now moment, is once again, I know I've mentioned this before, I think people, in my opinion, from my experience and my perspective, are very confused about spirituality and the way it impacts us at this time in our history. Many of you know, if you've been following me for a very long time, if you're new, I'll let you know my background outside of YouTube, how I make my money, what I do, my job, my career is I am the only female in the state of Georgia who is authorized by KPJYI in Mysore, India to teach a very old form of traditional yoga. With that comes years of philosophy study, years of studying Sanskrit, year, I mean, I've got all these years of studying so many different perspectives on the soul of a human being in our experience here on this earth. 
you guys know that I am a huge student as well of the law of one, the raw material. To me, the law of one and the raw material makes perfect sense. It's kind of common sense the more you get familiar with the material and it can be applied to any type of religious belief. And with that being said, with all of that being said, I think that a lot of people in this world in their ignorance, or maybe it's purposeful from the controllers, are very, very, very confused about spirituality. I think a lot of people think that spirituality is just a free for all when 99% of the time people are confusing what they perceive to be spirituality as their own imagination like they think they're hearing from spirit but it's literally the imagination or the ego and unfortunately if we look at the laws of spirituality there are some laws of forgiveness but not many and so you can't feign ignorance when it's time for your soul to move on to its next experience because every single choice you make is telling the universe which direction you want to go. And so looking at the law of one again, very simply put, we're in third density, which is the, the density of choice. And we have choice through the friction of polarity. So we have the path that is service to self and the opposite path, which is service to others. Service to self is the negative. Service to others is the positive. Now, with that, with being in service to others, you also have to take care of yourself first. And I don't want that to be confused because we're going to talk a little bit about like YouTube and martyrdom. Martyrdom is not a positive. Martyrdom is service to self. It's considered to be a selfish action. We're going to get a little bit into that. But I, I also want people to understand that within energy, there always has to be balance, a yin and a yang right? Think about the scales of justice. There always has to be balance, especially on the positive side. Okay. So what do we call this? We also call this an energy exchange. So for example, and this kind of gets back into the martyrdom before we get into the subject at hand. Me as a content creator here on YouTube, you know, I've, I've gone through the consequences of putting particular content up, meaning that it has massively affected me financially. So when you are watching a YouTube channel, just in general, doesn't matter what category, you're watching somebody present their work or entertain you. That takes energy. So for me, for example, for my deep dives, that takes days, if not weeks, if not sometimes months of actual deep research before I am prepared to present it on YouTube. It is hard work. I love it, but it is very hard draining work. You've got to research, you've got a storyboard, some people script, I don't script it, just storyboard. You've got to film it and then you've got to edit it. This is a full-time job, YouTube. I work seven days a week I because I also work outside. I also still teach, okay? And that's where I make the bulk of my money is teaching. I have to teach because I have to pay my bills. If I have to schedule a day off, if I got something going on and I need to schedule a day off, it really hinders me. So every single day of the week, I am working and it's exhausting. Now, the problem is that when I was being paid properly, it was fine. I, I enjoyed it even more and I felt fine. I felt replenished doing it. But since we've experienced the AdSense apocalypse in this corner of the internet, I make zero off of this, this work. And we see people a lot, Catherine Edwards and I have talked about this and I'm bringing it up again, just to kind of show you guys a point about energy exchange. When you are doing work, when you are ex when you are putting out energy, whether it's on YouTube, whether it's teaching, whether it's working your corporate job, that energy has to be replenished, right? What happens to your car if you don't put gas in your car? It stops working. What happens if you never change your battery or change your oil? It, it stop your car stops working. What happens if you as a human being stop eating? You, your body stops working. So there's constantly 
an exertion of energy, and then an energy has to be brought back and replenished. So the really, really good thing about YouTube or Rumble in its honest template where there is no consequences, we'll say, for certain content is that someone like me is able to do all this work to create this brand of Esoteric Atlanta, put this content out there, and I get paid by the AdSense. So you as the viewer who's enjoying the content don't actually have to put out the energy to replenish the energy that's being fed to you, if that makes sense. Now, for us here on YouTube, because we don't make any money, they put commercials on our shows, but we don't, we don't get in this corner of the, I'm trying to be careful how I say this. For those of us that challenge things, we've been heavily punished for that. You guys know this. And so for now, everything we put out is literally bringing no energy back to replenish me or any other person in my corner of the internet. So we're running on empty. And I'm so grateful to my patrons. I'm so grateful to our sponsors because that has helped a little bit. And I'm so freaking thankful for you guys. However, when I, I we get comments all the time from people where you shouldn't be charging people for your work. You should just be doing it just because. That's called vampirism. So what you're doing when you feel like someone like me or Catherine Edwards or Tamara should not be paid for our work, you are participating in vampirism because you're pulling, 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 pulling energy from us through enjoying our shows, watching our shows without with making it very vocally known that you don't think we deserve to get that energy back in return. So you're actually pushing for our demise, if that makes sense, energetically. Now, vampirism is a form of the negative. That is a form of the negative. So you can do that, but by leaving those comments or having those thoughts, you're informing the universe that you want to go negative because that's what you believe in. For me, you know, there's a lot of, of, of content that I watch on YouTube that isn't a part of this community. Like I watch a lot of storytelling um, channels that um, they're just talented and they're, they're entertaining. And I know how much work that content creator has done to put this up. And I get to watch it for free on YouTube. And so what I typically do for me is I usually let their, because I know they're still getting their AdSense because they haven't challenged the status quo. So what I do is I usually let all of their commercials play fully. I don't skip after five seconds because I want that person to be replenished because I'm grateful that that person put a lot of energy out to create this episode for me to enjoy and to make me think. And so that's something I feel like I can do. And I'm not suggesting you do that, especially here on YouTube at all, but that's just something like I do because I understand the energy exchange. Nothing in life is free. Absolutely nothing in life is free. It can't be. There's always going to be, a, for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's the karma. And so if you're expecting free all the time, then what you're expecting is vampirism and on the back end of that, enslavement. Because if somebody gives you things for free, you then have to abide by their rules so you think about when you were a kid when you were a teenager and your parents paid for your food your housing all that kind of stuff but yet you had rules you had to follow because you were they were providing your life so it's the same thing even when people think this like nasar is coming all that kind of stuff it's like but we need to practically think about this because what is it that Ronald Reagan said? Like the scariest words you can hear is, hi, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Yeah, like we have to be aware. We have to have discernment and understand the laws of spirituality. I hope that makes sense. So with that being said, I've gotten some comments about the Rumble platform, how they're putting more ads in Rumble. With all of this being said, with these platforms like YouTube and Rumble, there we literally as content creators have very little control. We literally upload our videos and that's about all. A lot of the issues and the, the complaints that I get from you guys is stuff that is out of my hands, like stuff that I cannot control. Um, I used to get it a lot. People would leave me scathing emails because they had hit the subscribe button and the bell and they weren't getting notified. 
just so you guys know, the content creator doesn't notify you. We have no way, unless we put it on our Instagram or, or notify it through our other social me media platforms that a video has dropped. But as far as the YouTube platform, YouTube is the one that sends the notifications out to you that a new video is dropped, not the content creator. That is absolutely out of my hands. It's out of everyone's hands on YouTube. And the emails, the abusive emails I've gotten because of that, which I do expect apologies for because it's totally out of my control. It's out of everyone's control on YouTube. And if you actually go and watch like drama channels or like beauty channels, they will say the same thing. Like, sorry guys, if you're not getting notified, it's out of my control. It's a, it's a platform issue. Same thing with comments. If you notice on YouTube, comments get shuffled a lot. They get moved around and sometimes they just get deleted on YouTube and it's not actually me that's deleted them. It's the, it's the platform and the platform does shuffle comments around. And so I've had people freak out because they can't find their comment and they go back and they find it and they think I've, I haven't shuffled them. Listen guys, I have so much to do during the day. I am not sitting on YouTube shuffling comments. I don't even, I, I can't do that. That's not a part. That's not anything the content creators can actually do. That's a platform issue. Okay. So a lot of the the criticisms as far as the production or the administration work is literally not even in my control. Now, again, with that being said, over on Rumble, first of all, I don't even know how to block people on Rumble. From what how I'm aware is that's not an issue. Like, I mean, that's not a thing you can do. Um, I had a comment, someone saying I blocked them on Rumble. There's no block button on Rumble. That, that's not a thing on Rumble like it is on YouTube. But on YouTube, it's just hiding a user from your channel. So basically what you do is you hide the user and the user can still comment, but no one sees their comment but the user. That's what you're doing. But on Rumble, there is that, that from what I'm aware of with Rumble, that does not exist. We can delete comments, but we cannot block people. Okay, so don't, again... My father used to tell us all the time that when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. So be very careful, again, thinking with your choices and spiritual choices we're making. Be very careful projecting your insecurities onto any content creator when you don't know the full story. Instead, you can just ask a simple question. Hey, was I blocked for some reason? And the content creator might be like, no. But on YouTube, it's probably YouTube that's doing it. Sometimes if it's not the creator blocking, it's YouTube doing stuff like that. On Rumble, again, I'm not aware of a way to block people on Rumble. I hardly check, as many of you guys know, I hardly check the comments on Rumble. I literally don't have the time. I check more on YouTube than I do on Rumble. YouTube's easier in that sense. But literally, I don't have that time in the day to research, to work to still work, to take my dog out, to do everything I need to do in my house. Again, I don't have a day off, so I'm not sitting on Rumble. That is the one platform where I have made the conscious decision to typically not check because I had to eliminate something. Now, with that being said, if somebody sends me a message and says there's some heavy bullying going on, I will at that point sign on and take care of it because I don't want that happening. You know, um, so, so yeah. Now another comment we got about Rumble is that Rumble is adding more ads into our videos. Now it used to be that Rumble just did an ad at the beginning and not a mid roll run, uh, ad run. And the good thing about Rumble is that you don't, on YouTube, you have to have a certain number of subscribers and watch hours to get monetization. But on Rumble, they let you monetize right away, which I think is an amazing thing that they've done. But in a, for a long time, it was just the, the first commercial before the show started. That was it. So like my Rumble videos maybe make me like $30 a month. No, it's literally nothing. And most people I know who put stuff on Rumble, they make nothing off of Rumble either. It's just they just have it as a backup platform. And it's a great place when we have potent videos that we can't put on YouTube for you guys. So... We have noticed, I have noticed, I got this comment, Tamara said something that they are putting more ads into our videos. And I know I had someone complain about that. I understand it's frustrating because I think they're starting to put a lot of ads in. Again, we have no control over that on Rumble. Rumble decides that, the platform decides that. I know Tamara has reached out to Rumble to try to figure out why there are so many now. But on the flip side of that, if you guys consider for just a moment, when I noticed that was happening, I actually felt some weight lift off my shoulders. 
because I thought maybe, perhaps maybe I can start to make back some income that I've lost. So I'm telling you guys, I've had to have serious conversations with my boyfriend. There have been, especially the last couple of weeks, that I might not be able to do this for much longer because I have to eat. And I don't know where people think I'm getting the money to pay for my life since this is taking up the bulk of my life and I make no money off of it. All right? We all have to survive. I want you guys to consider your jobs. Let's say you work, I don't know what you do watching, but let's say you work at a corporation and you make a living and you're making a steady income and you go into work tomorrow and your boss says, you know, we really need you to work, but we're not going to pay you anymore. And like, how dare you ask for pay? You should be of service to this corporation. And how dare you think you deserve to make something back to support yourself? How dare you think you deserve a house to live in and food to eat? You should just be here. That's vampirism. That's enslavement. And so I, I ask you guys with the whole Rumble situation, maybe be excited for the people on Rumble. All of your content creators that you love that have had to go to Rumble permanently, like maybe be happy for them that at least they're going to make some money, more than $30 a month. Maybe they'll make like 500 this month so they can at least get some groceries and put some gas in their car, you know? So I, just please consider that like... I, I know that when you're not on YouTube, because for a while I wasn't on YouTube, um, I know that um, that you don't know how much work goes into it. And when you get on YouTube, you realize how much it is nonstop all day work. And so I just maybe have some compassion, some empathy for these content creators, not, not just myself, but Catherine Edwards, Tamara, all the people that you love. Maybe by Rumble giving us more ads, Hopefully that will make our lives easier so we can give more content. Okay. And that's the energy exchange, right? So if you're trying to block that, if you're trying to take, 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 take from us content creators, like whipping us like dance monkey, dance monkey, dance monkey, without us being replenished, then you are actively choosing to go negative. And the universe is not going to judge you for that. They're just going to respond to that. And they're going to push you on the timeline with all the other bad people in the world that want to go negative. They're going, okay, that's what you want. You want enslavement. That's what you're asking for. You're, you're practicing vampirism by taking from somebody and not wanting them to have anything in return. We're okay. That's what you want. We're going to send you that way. So just be aware of that. And again, I say all this to bring us to the topic that I'm going to bring us in today. Cause I saw this last night. Um, now, I have spoken out about like Telegram and the, you guys know I'm a huge like whistleblower for the truther community because I've been in the truther community. I've seen what happens with some of these people when the cameras are off. And I'm telling you, you are being massively deceived by a lot of people. And I'm not going to say names because that's a legal issue. But you just just really pay attention and really study the laws of spirituality to understand where you're being deceived. Because the darkness, every the light and the darkness all need consent. And so by you supporting negative paths, you're consenting to that again, as I just said, right? Does that make sense? So when we don't have a foundation on the basic laws of energy and the basic laws of spirituality, we get manipulated. And through that manipulation, we give consent through our ignorance to maybe something we wouldn't have given consent to if we actually understood. But again, that ignorance, the universe doesn't care you gave consent. So again, martyrdom is, is, is a part of the negative path. So if I were to continue doing YouTube videos without making any money and go homeless, that's me choosing the negative path because I'm, that's me martyring myself. Okay. So everything comes at a cost. Everything. I hear now currently that there are on telegram, there are people on telegram that are appointing themselves interim governors. How is that any different from what the other, the, the, we'll say the bad guys, the blue team, how is that any different than what they've done? It's not. Just like the post I made yesterday about the censorship thing. If you don't, if you don't believe in censorship, then you have to also allow other people that you don't agree with to speak as well. Anti-censorship isn't believing that people who agree with you are the only people who should have freedom of speech. That's actually censorship. Yeah, censor to be anti-censorship means that every freaking thing, every single, every single idea, good or bad, should be allowed to be out there, and that's that's what I believe. 
So when we're not educated in spirituality, it's like I said this before, when people come out of a cult, like my friend Kelly Teal, who came out of Nexium, the likelihood of someone coming out of a cult and going directly into another cult is really high unless that person has therapy, unless that person actually deprograms and starts to sit back and understand what happened to them. So I think the problem is that so many people in the truth or community, which I do believe is a cult at this point, a tyrannical, dangerous cult, high controlled cult. What has happened is that they left this world of mainstream media where they were being told what to think. And instead of actually figuring out doing the work to figure out why they fell for it in the first place, they went to another high controlled group where they're still being told what to think. And so we have these people on Telegram and this is getting to my point of the story I found where they're appointing themselves as interim governors. Well, that's a banana republic. That's a coup. That's what they did as well. There, it's no different. It's like all these people that think JFK Jr. is secretly our vice president. Well, I didn't vote for him. Did you vote for him? He wasn't on the ballot. So regardless of whether he would be good at the job or not, that's not what we're debating. We're debating on whether he is given permission by the people to have that role. Or is this just another tyrannical takeover in a different package? So that's just something to consider. Now, with that being said, I'm going to share screen here, you guys, because this app, my heart sank when I saw this. My heart absolutely sank. What have we come to? And these are all my, um, this is all just my opinion. This is not based in any fact. Please do your own research. I just want to talk about this because I'm having concerns. Sorry, my computer is being a little bit slow right now. The internet's being slow. We got um, construction, as you guys know. So there is a group called Rebuilding Atlantis. And look at this tagline here, you guys. This is a huge, huge red flag. Huge. Building my own town in West, West Texas, letting people live here for free. Now, the rules of this planet mean that nothing is free. Because if you just take and take and take and take from somebody without replenishing them, they die, right? If you, don't, if you don't water your plants, what happens? If you don't feed your pets, what happens? So nothing in life is free. Now, I haven't watched all these videos, but I've watched some other people reacting to this, and I agree with a lot of the people who are rea who've reacted to this, that this is scary. This is terrifying to me. So this guy apparently has built... Bought, well, first of all, we're still in the matrix. Like, there's no alternative reality right now for us. We're in the matrix. And even though I don't believe that property tax should exist, I think it needs to be, it's horrible, it needs to be abolished. It doesn't, it still does exist though, right? Like, it still exists. And if you don't pay your property tax, the government's going to come seize your land. That's the reality. So for now, my advice to people would be pay your property tax until we can get legislation, legislator to remove that tax okay but right now so this dude has got this land in west texas and he's offering for people to come live here for free kind of like a commune now commune living some people like commune living that sounds like a nightmare to me i no i, I want my own space um basically too because of commune living you, you find this this idea sometimes if you historically look at it where it's kind of like when you had a group project as a kid and one or two people would be doing bulk of the work while everyone else would be lazy. And that, that's what you see with a lot of communes is that bulk of the people are the ones doing the planting, doing the labor to keep the commune running while everyone just sits around and expects it to be done. And that again is a form of enslavement, of vampirism. And so I kind of wanted to put this out there today. And I will tag this TikTok down below for you guys to, to look at it for yourselves. Um, there's a lot of people who have gone and moved onto this guy's property and then left and have basically come out being like, this is not what you think it is. This is dangerous. This is scary. This is a cult, basically. And I'm definitely going to be looking more into this over the next few weeks. But yeah, I, I think, you know, when people see this tagline, especially since we've been 
so aware of what's been going on in our own governments that this guy's bought this land and he's letting people live there for free. It sounds good, but nothing is free. Nothing is free. There's got to be a catch here. There's got to be a catch. You can't go off and incorporate your own government. Look what happened in the, from what they tell us with the American Civil War when the South pulled away from the Union to create its own country. Look what happened. A war happened. So to secede from the nation and to create your own government, it's not as easy as just bippity boppity booing your way out of it. There's legal paperwork. There's, there's, there's lots that has to be done. All right. And so I'm just putting this out here as a warning. I think this is super fishy and this is super scary to me. I see nothing but a huge gaping red flag. I see no green flags here because nothing is free. And for people who don't know the laws of spirituality, who think that spirituality is just a free for all, are going to get duped by this. They're going to, just like they've been duped by the med beds. Nothing is free. Nothing. Nothing is free. With spirituality, you know, there's that great meme that says, um, you, I, you know, you're a spiritual person, be more specific because demons are spirits too spirituality isn't just the side of light it is also the side of darkness we look at these people who practice this religion we'll say in this control the controllers group the illuma shmati that group they're deeply spiritual people these are deeply spiritual people don't 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 not think they they're deeply spiritual probably more spiritual than myself are you watching but their spirituality is practiced in the dark not the light both are two paths of spirituality in a pol polarized planet the darkness and the light that's friction from the opposing forces is what gives us the people here in their density the information to make a choice are you going to go dark are you going to go light that's all the universe is asking you do you want to go with satan or do you want to go with god you choose you get to choose and you choose by making choices that indicate which path you want to pick so any type of enslavement any type of vampir vampirism is a service to self-action any type of martyrdom is a service to self-action nothing is free there's no such thing as free on this planet god's love is all that's free and in god's love if you want to go with Satan, if you're making the choices to go with Satan, he's going to let you go. He's going to let you go there because that's your choices that you're making. It's complicated. It's complex. But the more you study it, the more you see it for what it is. On the side of light, first of all, the side of light has no such thing as monarchy, has no such thing as elitism. There's no pecking order on the side of light when it comes to the value of human life or the value of life in general. So all these people that are talking about the Christ bloodline on the truther side are certain families being, you know, the bloodline families to save us. That's no different than what the Illuma Shmati does. It's saying that there are people who are elites and who are better and know better. And therefore there's a pecking order. That's darkness. So if you're somebody that believes like General Flynn or Mr. T that they have some sort of bloodline that makes them better than you, you're telling the universe you want to go negative. Over on the light, we can respect Mr. T, respect people like General Flynn, respect these people for their role in this, this, this timeline, but I don't see my life or your life as being any less valuable than Mr. T. We're equal. We're equals. On the side of light, we believe in energy exchange. On the side of light, for example, at our yoga shala, if we have a student that is in dire finan financial straits and can't pay um, tuition, usually we work something out with them. Well, they'll do like a karma program or they'll like come in and help clean the studio or they'll put up Instagram posts for the studio. So there is still an exchange of energy happening because that's what balances it. Yeah. Yeah, I used to hate that when I first started teaching yoga where people like, you should be teaching for free. How am I going to teach you for free and still pay for the shala? 
still pay for the lights to be turned on, still pay for a roof to be over your head as I'm teaching you. I have to pay to go to India. I have to pay my teacher. So why shouldn't I also be paid? So I want you guys to really just reevaluate these beliefs that martyrdom somehow is a good thing or that taking from somebody without paying them in return is a good thing. It's vampirism. And again, as I just said, it doesn't always have to be monetary. All money is is energy. That's all it is. You know, you can barter. I barter with people all the time. All the time. I have Reiki friends. I'll give them a private yoga lesson and they'll give me Reiki treatments. That's, that's an energy exchange. I hope that makes sense. So ask yourself, are you depleting from somebody else without helping them replenish themselves? Because nothing is free. Nothing is free. Again, with that being said, you don't, have, you don't have to join my Patreon. That is totally optional for people. I've never pushed that on people. And I love my Patreon so much. And I thank you guys so much. You guys get it. And I thank you guys so much for finding me. You guys really have, have kept this channel going. You have no idea. You have kept this channel going. Without the Patreons, this channel would have been shut down by now. But if you don't have the money to, to support somebody on YouTube, then don't complain about their AdSense. Don't complain when they have a sponsorship, a new sponsorship. Be happy for them because that's allowing you to watch that content for free. And that's allowing that person to be replenished so that they can continue doing what they, what they do. To me, this makes sense. To me, this is common sense. It's logical. Um, I don't understand how other people don't get it. It's like the airplane. You know, when you fly in an airplane and they tell you, like, you have to put your oxygen mask on first before you help the person beside you. It's the same thing. Same thing. So anyway, you guys, I'm going to ask you guys, check out this Rebuilding Atlantis. I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to go back and watch a lot more of these TikToks, but I wanted to put this up ASAP because I feel like this is a huge red flag and it's something that's building. And we know there's all these people on TikTok becoming like interim governors and stuff, which is total, a total coup as well. It's part of the darkness too. So um, I'm going to put this up. I will be looking more into it. Wanted to just sound the alarm. In my opinion, in my opinion, this is very, very concerning. From all of my experience, my 19 years of studying spirituality, this reeks of darkness. Reeks of it. So, anyway, you guys. All right, I'm going to put this down below. Check out their TikTok, and we will probably, maybe um, on my TikTok channel, I'll have to see how, the ne how next week goes, because next week is the week. If you guys know what I mean. We can't say the E word, so it's the week, the competition. Um, so, but maybe at some point we can actually do a live on my TikTok accounts because I think from what I understand with TikTok lives, you know, here on YouTube lives, unless I had StreamYard, which I don't like StreamYard. So I have not, I don't have StreamYard. Um, I can't, I can only read your comments. I mean, I could potentially put a link in the in the comment section but i think it would be more of like a shit show here on youtube but i believe on tiktok live i can actually you can request to jump in the box with me and so we can have conversations about this so um look at it yourself let me look at tiktok if you're not following me on tiktok i have not connected my tiktok channel to my youtube channel yet but they both exist. So the link to TikTok is in the description box under show notes. Join us over there. And maybe we can schedule a live where we openly talk about this together after we've all looked at it ourselves. And we can kind of discuss what we think is actually going on here with this rebuilding Atlantis. So anyway, guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I'll talk to you soon.